Good afternoon. My name Good is. Good afternoon. I am the president and CEO of Invest Newark, uh, the city of Newark's economic development corporation. Today is the latest in our Financial Friday series, where we will be highlighting access to capital opportunities for our small businesses that are struggling with the effects of COVID-19. We have a wonderful, wonderful panel with us today uh, with a variety of both public and private sector partners who have different financing opportunities, uh, grant and assistance opportunities, as well as technical assistance resources that they want to discuss with you all uh, as you work through the issues associated with the new uh, payroll protection program, as well as the other assistance being offered by the new administration, as well as other financial institutions in wake of COVID-19. Uh, we thank you for joining us today. We're very excited about the information that we're gonna share. And uh, with that, I will turn it over to Vanessa Quijano, the Senior Vice President of Business Development for Invest Newark. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Burnell. <clears throat> we are pleased to bring back Financial Fridays in 2021, and our first session to, uh, this year is Access to Capital. I'd like to invite all our panelists to turn on their video so and, uh, everyone can see you. You know, today's webinar is going to focus on the SBA's PPP loan application process, but we're and we're going to have several PPP lenders, local, distant, even online share how best to apply with them and in the future. Also, we're gonna have someone from GNAC who will share their funding options. That's the Greater Newark Enterprises Corporation, as well as NJEDA will be also introducing their phase two emergency loan program. We're also very fortunate to have representatives from the African American Chamber of Commerce of New Jersey, the State Hispanic Chamber of Commerce of New Jersey, the U.S. Veteran Chamber, and also the U.S. Pan-Asian American Chamber. All of these chambers have assistance to support their respective members and also respective businesses of their diversity um, criteria. With that, uh, I, don't, I don't want us to hold you too too long, I wanna ensure that we get information to you immediately. So uh, we're gonna start with the SBA and then NJEDA, then Greater Newark Enterprises Corporation. Then you'll meet some of the lenders that can tell you how to benefit from their support and then also the Chambers of Commerce. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Alfred Titone, the District Director of the U.S. Small Business Administration, New Jersey District. Thanks, Vanessa, and thanks for having me. So I'm gonna give you all a lot of information in a very short time. I'm gonna be pulling slides from a couple of different presentations. I'm not sure you'll be able to see them, but either way, you'll get the information. Um, since this is focused on PPP, I'm gonna go over that last. I do want folks to be aware of a couple other things. The disaster loan is still available. You can still apply for that. It has been extended to the end of December. So the idle loan, you can still go to that and you can uh, go on sba.gov forward slash coronavirus and everything you need to know about SBA's programs for support for the disaster and this uh, entire system will be... Um, some background noise there, will be uh, available. Um, I'm going to try, let me know if this works. I'm going to try to share my screen here. I'm not 100% sure that this will work, but let's see. Nope. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just go over the information. Um, as I mentioned, Idle is still available, so you can still apply for that if you want to. I know a lot of people are talking about the Shuttered Venue Operators Grant. There's a list of frequently asked questions you can find also online, also under the sba.gov forward slash coronavirus um, link. 
so you can get information on that. We don't have a lot other than what's there, uh, but there is a couple of things I'm going to touch on with that as I go through the PPP. The first, so the PPP, as you all may have already heard or not, it has two versions. It's got a first draw and a second draw. All that means is that the first draw is for folks that did not apply at all for the first round that ended back in August. All right, so they had first crack at the money um, the, for the first week or so. Now everybody can come on. So if you had a PPP loan and you're going for what they call the second draw, that's for anybody who had previously had one. Basically, the qualification the qualifications are that you had to have lost, shown a loss of 25% quarter to quarter, either from 2019 to 2020 compared to now. Um, you had to have finished spending all your original PPP money and had spent it on and, and gotten the uh, qualification for the grant. You do not have to have gotten forgiveness yet. It can be in the process. It, doesn't matter, but you do have to have spent all the money. Okay, so that's kind of a critical thing. Now, one thing that's been happening over the last couple of days, which I had a full head of hair three days ago, um, is that something's happened with the system. And some of you may have experienced it, or you may have heard about it. And folks is being told that they don't qualify for the loan because they already have a loan outstanding when they don't, or they finished doing the loan and it's telling them that they didn't. This is a glitch in the system. So I'm just telling you straight out front, okay? It's going to be fixed. They are working feverishly on figuring out what happened. It literally happened, I think, yesterday or the day before. Uh, so that's going to get straightened out. So if you have tried to apply in the last couple of days and you've gotten something that just doesn't sound right, give it a day or two and you can go back through your lender and hopefully everything will be fixed longest by the end of the weekend. I can't make any promises because I don't know what the time frame is going to be, but I do know they're working feverishly with it um, in headquarters. The other thing for those uh, shuttered venues that I want to touch on is that in order to qualify, one of the things we can tell you is that in order to qualify for the grant, you can have gotten, you can have applied for a PPP loan after December 27th. So if you apply before December 27th of last year, and you could still qualify for the grant. But if you are in the process of, um, if you're in the process of applying for a PPP loan, understand that if you put that application through or your lender puts that application through for you, it will disqualify you from the SVOG. So make sure you're doing your math. I mean, in some cases that may be a better deal for you, but in, it just make sure you're doing your math, make sure you, you've you got it straight because the SVOG is out there. I think it's gonna be best for smaller venues, but I, you have to make that decision for yourself. But understand if you apply for the SVOG, you, you cannot have applied for a PPP loan um, after December 27th, or you can't have put it through. If you're if you're still in the working with your lender and your lender hasn't submitted it to SBA yet, you should be fine. But once that's been submitted to SBA, whether you withdraw it or not, it doesn't matter. It will disqualify you for the SVOG. Okay, so that's one thing that we can tell you that is kind of important. Um, other than that, I'm going to let it go. And if there's going to be questions later, I don't know, or we can or Vanessa can actually send them to me and I'll try to answer what we can. But as far as the SVOG, that's all I can tell you. But the PPP, it's there. Oh, and the money's not going to run out. I'd be really surprised. Don't sweat it. There's plenty of money there. Take your time. Get it right. I want, I'm sorry, Vanessa, one more thing. Um, when you are applying for your second round of the PPP, everything has to be identical. When I say identical, that's exactly what I mean. So if you put in your information in and last time you used your EIN, that was not your social security number or your TIN, and this time you use your social security number, you're gonna get messed up. If you have 271 apartment B, you spelled out apartment, spell out apartment this time. Don't abbreviate it. We don't know what's triggering it, but every slightest little thing could trigger you getting pulled by the SBA. So make sure the information that you're giving the agency is identical. 
to what you did last time. That is critically important. A few hours or a day or two extra now is going to save you weeks and weeks down the line. And that's about it. Thank you, Al. That is very vital information. Um, I actually have heard from some businesses saying that you kicked out. So um, thanks again for sharing that. And definitely send me your slide and we'll include it um, as we edit this presentation from the recording. Thank you, Al. Now, I'd no like problem. to uh, introduce a resource that's new to the area. Um, Kelly Brosnia, she is the State Director of the Small Business Development Center. Kelly, why don't you introduce yourself and um, share what your uh, focus is? Great, thank you. I appreciate giving the opportunity. So as the state director of the Small Business Development Center Network, we are partners with SBA and funded through SBA, but we also are funded from the state of New Jersey and our local partners as well. We provide no cost consulting and low cost and no cost training programs. We are right now doing a series of webinars specific to COVID and the CARES um, all the CARES funding that has come down, partnering with SBA on the PPP idle, as well as um, the shuttered grant soon to come out for live venues. So really our target is to help the businesses that have been struggling, that have, um, are trying to survive. And our real focus point really is about helping New Jersey businesses stay in business and, and hopefully to grow in business as well. So we wanna be a resource for you all. Again, it's no cost control consulting. And I think that um, through partnership and through all working together, we can really truly help the businesses, especially in the finance side of things to access this capital and know that you have a friend with the SBDC to help them out. So thank you very much, I appreciate it. Thank you, Kelly, and welcome to, to Newark. As um, everyone uh, I has mentioned, you know, there are several resources available and we'll make sure that they are available on our website. Uh, before we jump uh, into more detail on the PPP loan, I'd like to introduce Maribel Fermin from the NJEDA, who has some great news to share as well. Thank you, Vanessa. Thank you, Bernal and the team for uh, having me, we really appreciate the opportunity to get the word out there uh, to our business community. So I'm Mary Bell Furman. Once again, I'm a senior small business liaison with NJEDA. And, uh, you know, my organization is responsible for the growth, uh, the economic growth in the state of New Jersey. So most applicants relate to us because uh, throughout the COVID-19, the economic crisis, uh, NJEDA has been able to provide grants and financial programs at a very low cost, and many of them at no cost. So um, I'm proud to be here to assist and take the business owner by the hand. As of the day, I have to tell you, uh, we have facilitated uh, programs and deliver $238 million uh, to our business community. We have helped over 55,000 business owners with grants of, of the 238,000, I'm happy to say 211,000 have been offered in, in the terms of uh, grants, which is money you don't pay back to the state. So uh, basically um, we have been able to continue supporting. We're uh, now ready to provide the um, a small business emergency assistance loan program. And, and this is a 10 year terms um, program where uh, the first five years, the business owner does not pay any interest rate, which is fantastic for the business owners. So basically what is it that we're dedicating is uh, $10 million, just as we did on phase one, uh, $10 million and $3.5 million are reserved for business owners and not for profit organizations who reside in an opportunity zone. So that is huge uh, for us to have the opportunity to support all business owners that you know, are in greatest need of these um, programs. So we can facilitate uh, up to $100,000 in the small business emergency loan program. If you already applied for phase one of the emergency assistance loan program with NJEDA back in April, 
you'll be able to apply for, um, let's say, if you borrow $50,000, you can borrow the additional $50,000. So we can facilitate up to $100,000 per each entity. If you own more than one entity, you can apply for each business entity. Um, again, what is it or that we're looking for in terms of eligibility? So the business uh, must be in the existence in the state of New Jersey uh, for a year, okay? So um, at least a year to be able to apply. We're looking for a small business owner who did not generate over $5 million, okay? So $5 million or less is the criteria. All not-for-profit organizations are, all 501Cs will be able to uh, be considered for these uh, emergency assistance loan programs with NJEDA. And the business must uh, already uh, been impacted. So they have to prove um, the way we do that again is the uh, profit loss report that's gonna be uh, taken care of when we process the application, we take you by the hand and compare two quarters to make sure that yes, we can uh, prove that your business was in fact uh, impacted by COVID-19, okay? So the business must be registered in the state of New Jersey and also in good standing. Uh, let's say you cannot owe money to any entity of the state taxation, uh, be up to date with the Department of Labor. And uh, basically, um, ineligible businesses, unfortunately, the um, a small home-based business owner will not be able to apply this round of application. Uh, we'll have more programs uh, to come and grants so that we can facilitate to the, uh, all the businesses again. So keep an eye on the COVID-19 website for future programs. Um, again, home-based business will not be able to apply this round of applications, real estate, holding companies, um, transient businesses, those that, you know, they go to um, from one place to the other, they're seasonal, or prohibited businesses like gambling, uh, adult services, obviously, so those will not be able to apply. So again, with the application process, we have postponed um, the the dates because we don't want to create confusion to the public uh, because of we have the you know SBA PPP so we want to allow for that uh, process of application and then you know we'll come back to uh, Vanessa and Bernal hopefully you will give me the opportunity again to come back and give you the insights of the application technical um, assistance uh, so people can be ready for the application and uh, as well as, you know, um, the dates. So unfortunately, dates are postponed right now. Oh, okay. So just yeah. to be clear, so no pre-registration yet. on No pre-registration, no. But again, you know, thank you for bringing that up, Vanessa, because yes, we're going to have a pre-registration process. If the business already applied with NJEDA, uh, let's say to a micro-business loan or they apply to the phase three, then we are utilizing the same platform that requires that you uh, create a user ID and password. So um, many businesses who already applied, they have a user ID and password. So we'll come back to you uh, if you give me the opportunity in the future so we can provide dates when businesses could pre-register and then at a specific date when we start taking applications. Understood. Thank you for the clarification, Maribel. Thank As we you. all know, things change day by day. So um, we you. really appreciate it and happy to hear that the loan process is going to open again. Definitely. Yes. Thank you, Vanessa. Thank you. So with that, I'm going to bring in um, our executive director of the Greater Newark um, Enterprises Corporation. Good afternoon, Victor. Good afternoon, Vanessa. Thank you for having me. I appreciate the opportunity and thank you to Invest Newark for all that you do for the community. So uh, let me uh, just tell you a little bit about Greater Newark Enterprises Corporation. We are a Newark-based CDFI lender uh, and we really work with the under underserved community. That's our mission. We are very much a mission-driven lender. And uh, what just to give you some, some data, basically over the past 10 years, 88% of our lending has uh, been done to entre uh, entrepreneurs of color. Uh, so that's definitely part of our mission. And last year, all 100% of all our loans were the entrepreneurs of color. And around COVID-19, 
Um, you know, and you can check check our website at uh, gnecorp.org, uh, uh, and you can check all this out. What we have is, you know, we are a lender. We also provide technical assistance, and we we run uh, workshops. So the idea here is we set up an um, Entrepreneurs of Color COVID uh, Relief Fund. And that is specifically for Newark based businesses owned by entrepreneurs of color who have suffered a significant uh, revenue loss because of COVID. And, uh, you know, th this is all self reported, but uh, basically the idea is that we, we have funds available um, at uh, very competitive rates uh, to help uh, businesses out. And, uh, we're, you know, we're, we're, looking, we're looking forward to helping you out in whichever way. We've got a number of things. Uh, uh, besides just lending, we are also going to be offering a specific program for women entrepreneurs of color in the greater Newark area. Well, we'll be providing some workshops around sort of marketing, social media, uh, website development, et cetera. And then we're going to be selecting a number of uh, women entrepreneurs of color to give them one-on-one -on -one coaching. And we also uh, have some funds to help with, uh, you know, fees around website development, even, you know, whatever it may be, sort of the, some of the small fees that technology companies charge entrepreneurs, but we want to give those women entrepreneurs uh, of color a, sort of a little bit of a, of a, of a leg up in, in getting their, uh, their products or services out into the marketplace and in, 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 uh, improving their branding or improving their sort of marketing. So, uh, so that's basically the highlight. Just just one last thing. I don't want to take too long because there's so many great panelists, but uh, our lending is basically up to sixty thousand dollars, and um, you know, from about five to ten, from to sixty thousand dollars, will under you know the the uh, the uh, client will undergo a, a pretty a regular rigorous um, underwriting um, you know uh, process. We also have uh, small loans, which we call the DreamMaker loans, about $5,000, which is certainly uh, less underwritten, but there are four businesses that are, you know, just maybe beyond startup, but have been dinged by COVID-19 or, uh, you know, businesses that need uh, assistance in purchasing um, some inventory or a special machinery. So that's what we do as well. So we look forward to each and every one of you to reaching out. You, you have my email there and you can also go to our website. You can go to Loan Inquiries, um, just, just look for Get Started and just send us an email and we'll, we'll get the process started. Uh, again, very mission driven uh, lending that we do. And we're here to help the, the Newark community. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Victor. Um, just one question. Of course. So the Dream Makers and the Entrepreneurs of Color COVID Fund, are, are those expected to be open for and available for a while? Or is there, you know, yeah, great um, question. A time great frame question. That's not going to be available any longer. I mean, I think I think, you know, we'll we'll keep it open until the funds run out. Hopefully, uh, I'll do a good job and raise more funds. <laughs> so that's that's one of the things. But right now it's certainly open. We see it open certainly um, deep into the second quarter. And then, and then we'll, we'll see where, where we stand. I mean, if, it's, if, if we get an avalanche of applications and, and things fit our underwriting criteria, then we may run out of funds sooner, but I, I'm hoping not. But look for about, sort of, let's say mid to late second quarter. Good to know, good to know. Cause um, you know, as everyone applies for things, I, I found that some businesses, they, they wait to hear before they apply for anything else. And, you know, as we're having this presentation today, I want to share with everyone to apply for as money as you can. You know, um, you know, obviously there's restrictions how often you can apply for PPP or the NJEDA loans, but doesn't uh, hold them back from applying from, from your funds um, or, or any other potential other grants or funding opportunities. So thank you again, Victor. And uh, My pleasure. Thank you. And now I'd like to welcome uh, this afternoon to Willie Blaylock from Industrial Bank. Hi, Willie. Good afternoon, Vanessa. How are you? Vanessa and Bruno, first, uh, thank you for inviting us to uh, this uh, panel to we, so that we can have a discussion around small business opportunities, especially uh, uh, in our area. Uh, for those who don't Uh oh, we have a little technical difficulties. Uh, 
Willie, uh, we can't hear you at this moment. So uh, maybe mute and unmute. Don't know me. I am Willie Blaylock. I'm the senior vice president and I uh, have the same principles pretty much as uh, City National Bank. So it was a good fit. Uh, with that being said, uh, just like all the other panelists, we do have a full array of uh, business services. We're a full commercial bank. Uh, what's important to know is that uh, we have tweaked some things for the small business owners uh, to make it a little easier for them to uh, manage during these times. Uh, we will do uh, government contract funding if in fact there is a contract that a small business owner has received from the government and they're looking to hire people, especially when they're looking to create jobs and things of that nature, we'll be more than willing to look at things like that and entertain them. In addition to uh, purchase orders, uh, financing from legitimate companies that we can actually verify and ensure that the uh, company itself is strong enough to um, pay you when you fulfill those services and everything, in addition to account uh, financing for accounts receivable and factoring and things of that nature. Uh, want to talk a little bit about PPP because it is extremely important and that's the, uh, the buzz acronyms I guess everyone is actually using, but a uh, few things on that front is uh, Industrial Bank, of course, because of our size, we have partnered with an online platform so that all of the uh, small business customers that we accommodate uh, have an online platform that they can actually go to directly to uh, submit their information and apply and upload everything that's actually needed. Uh, it's extremely important that you uh, review uh, sites like the SBA website that's spoken earlier and things of that nature so that you know uh, what you actually are doing. Uh, and that you're, you know about your calculation options and best programs and things for you. Uh, also, it's very important, it was said earlier, but make sure that uh, you're double checking all of your information and your figures uh, that you're actually inputting in the system to make sure that it actually makes sense. And then of course, ask before you submit. Uh, that's very important as well, because there are so many resources out there that you can get information from uh, before you put something through and it actually rejects and it goes back and forth into a system. Uh, the online platform that uh, Industrial Bank has, you can access that directly through the website at industrial-bank.com and go to small business and just click on the link there and it'll take you directly to the portal for you to start your application. It's that simple. Uh, we do have designated individuals that are reviewing the information. So anything that is out of whack, just by a quick review, they will uh, reject it, look it over and maybe reach out to the individual, be it by phone or by email to ask some questions and get some clarification as to uh, the information that sticks out. Because if it sticks out from with us from a first review, I'm sure when SBA gets it, it's going to uh, reject and stick out as well. So we want to make sure that the processing is as smoothly and as quickly as possible because we understand that it's very difficult times and everyone actually need the money. Uh, so we want to get you the funds as quickly as possible. Uh, additionally, uh, we also have in place uh, some lending for businesses who are just starting out as long as you've been in business for six months. Uh, we have some partnerships that we actually created, especially Everyone uh, right now is looking to create partnerships and to uh, create some type of synergy so that we can accommodate as many people as, and many customers as possible. And with that being said, we do have a partnership uh, for startup businesses who are looking to uh, receive some financing as well, which we didn't have in the past. We would just refer them to like the SBA or some of our other uh, local partners that are around, but we have a little better vehicle for them to get them uh, until they get what we classify as truly bank ready for uh, traditional uh, bank loans. Uh, finally, Industrial Bank is a minority deposit uh, institution in addition to a, a community development financial institution. So what that means is the majority of the loans that we do at Industrial Bank must go to women and minority businesses and in underserved and underbanked areas. So uh, that's something that uh, we're very proud of and we continue to uh, strive to do our best to accommodate all of the individuals that are on here. So again, I appreciate the time and looking forward to uh, hearing the other speakers and uh, providing as much information as we possibly can so that everyone can run their businesses. Willie, thank you so much. Um, so 
just one uh, question. So Industrial Bank has, uh, you know, a actual branch in Newark. Can people come by if they need assistance or everything's done by email? For the most part, everything is actually done by email, the portal itself. So if there's questions and things, you can submit those and we'll get them, we'll get answers back to you quickly uh, because of the uh, situation with COVID and we were updating our branches and we went to a more, and you'll find a lot of offices, we went to a more personable space. So if you go to our uh, 54 uh, Halsey, you'll see that there is no barriers and things. And we have, we're putting some things in place. So there are appointments that can be set up so that uh, the representatives know the cup and we ensure that it's safe for our customers as well as the employees. So without any question, if there are questions around it, then by all means, you can email the bank uh, and we'll be more than willing to, if we can't answer it, we'll always put you in touch with the resource that can or refer you to uh, someone who can or get the answer and place it out there on our website so that everyone has the information because in most cases, the individual is not the only one asking the question. Great, thank you, Willie, because I know, I know some people will just think they can still walk in and I wanted to make sure we share that information. Thank you, Willie. Sure. So now I'd like to introduce um, from Valley Bank, Luis De La Hose. Let me, are you? Yes, I'm. Hi, good afternoon, I'm, Louis. Hello, how are you? I'm well, I'm well. Thank you for joining us. I look forward to hearing how Valley is helping um, businesses. <clears throat> okay, bank, uh, Valley is a local bank started here in, in the county of Passaic but we have two branches in Newark and I have the opportunity to lead the community lending, which is a department that is focused on minorities. And at this time we have Karina Ojeda and we have Christina Shark on our group that we are dedicated just for, to help minority owned business owners to navigate the process to apply for a PPP loan or for any other financial services. Uh, we are bilingual English and Spanish and we have people that will be able to assist other minorities that doesn't speak either English or the, or the Spanish. And our goal is not just to uh, refer them to the portal, we will get, guide them through the entire process. Um, this uh, community lending started last year, I was hired in August, and in October, Karina and Christina joined us. And now we have Mike, Mike Warrington that is also part of the, the group. And we have George Flamengo and, and Fatima in Newark that they can assist if you have any questions. Um, we are conducting almost everything uh, via Zoom or via any platform uh, that is online. But as I say, we will be able to reach out to us and we will be able to guide you if you have any questions, if you are not 100% sure that the amount that you received on the first round was the amount that you was expecting, if you didn't apply for the first time, and that happened to many, many small business owners that they, they reach out to financial institution early uh, last year. And at the beginning, we was only considering uh, businesses with payroll. If they have a Schedule C or they are a sole proprietorship, they can be considered. And we will be likely to have those conversations, even if they are not banking with us. Um, if they want to process, the only requirement is that they need to open a a bank account, but uh, the process is really smooth. Now as uh, bankers, we are better prepared for this round because we are more familiar with the information, with the documents, with the process, with everything. And our goal is to guide a minority, a small business owners that want to participate on this program. We will be available via social media, via text, via WhatsApp, whatever a method of communication you will prefer. And as I said, our goal is to assist you, not only to direct you to the portal, but also to guide you through every, uh, every step of the process. And we have access to see uh, like the status and the documents that you're missing or the pieces of information that sometimes are confusing and need to be in place in order for you to be approved. Um, we, you know, as minority, could be any minority, but we are very proud to serve veterans. And we have the leader of the, veteran, the, the New Jersey State Veteran Chamber of Commerce, Francisco Cortez with us today. 
And as I, you know, I want to emphasize, we are open to assist minority small business owners if they are in Newark or any other places, because in many cases, even if the business is in Newark, they can go to the branch that is close to where they live um, if that is easier for them. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. I shared the contact information from the entire team in the chat, and we are here to help. Thank you. Thank you, Luis. I think that is a very helpful information that and sharing your contacts in the chat room to help you know a variety of businesses. Also, obviously, we can hear um, also multilingual um, it is helpful. So for for any um, minority business owners that may need assistance in a variety of language, it sounds like they can go to Valley. Thank you. Yes, we are. Uh, we know the demographics in the state and especially in Newark, which is a diverse <coughs> city, and we are here to assist as much as we can. Thank you, Luis, and we'll be talking a little bit more later. Thank you. Thank you. Um, at this time, I'd like to um, introduce Sandra Workman. She is the VP, Vice President of SBA slash Commercial Lending Officer at the Harbor Bank of Maryland. Um, we are bringing another bank in to this uh, conversation so that you realize there are other sources that are available to you, not just in state, but also out of state. So Sandra, may I uh, ask you to join on video? Sure, I, I, um, I'm having a little bit of technical difficulties here when I put my video up. So I find that it's working a little bit better without it. Um, my apologies here. Um, but thank you, thank you for having us. And um, I won't take up a lot of time and uh, echo a little bit of what was said, um, some of the panel before us, um, but we are um, a community bank uh, uh, housed here in the uh, Maryland area. Uh, we are, around. we did the first time around, we're doing this time around uh, to the full extent of the program, which is up to the, um, $10 million. Uh, uh, we are. Sandra, you're coming in and out. Entertain, sorry, applets and not. Uh, then there are two points out. Sorry. Is better? It's a little better. Yeah, if you could just. Hello? Yes. Hello, Sandra. Go ahead. Yes. I'm, I'm sorry. I've got really bad reception today. So I just want to make a three point. We are certainly participating to the full extent of the PPP program. I think to the listeners who have not taken advantage of this is a fantastic opportunity. The first um, and we too have additional information that can be found on our website, which is the Harbor at, um, at the harborbank.com. And uh, the, the other thing I point I'd like to make or, or echo is something around and we participated the first time and it was a little bit easier for borrowers to get through the system this time the sba really is checking data and matching data and we can't stress enough to spend that time up front making sure that your application is as complete as it can be as accurate as it can be and it's really going to save you a lot of time um, on the back end it's going to save your lender a lot of time on the back end so again uh, we are happy to talk with you to help you navigate this process, and uh, uh, you can find more information and get in contact with us on our via our website. Thank you so much, Sandra. Um, for you know, for people that are listening, and this is the first time they're hearing about the Harbor Bank of Maryland. Um, why would they select to you know go to a bank that's out of state that they're not a an existing client? Yes, we are. Um, uh, and that includes those out, out of state. And so I know the first time around, we had a significant number, uh, number of applicants that were not in our region and that we were able to. I think we understand, unfortunately, yes, your um, reception is, is not clear, but 
Thank you so much, Sandra. And uh, maybe we can put your uh, email address in the chat room so everyone uh, can reach out to you if Harbor Bank is for them. Thank you so much. So now I'd like to introduce to you from True Fund Bank, uh, True Fund Financial, Stephen Berrios. Are you there, Steve? I'm here, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great, and thank you for having me. Okay, so uh, hello everyone. My name is Stephen Berrios from True Fund Financial Services. Uh, True Fund is based out of New York City. Our office is in Ma Manhattan and we saw, serve all five boroughs and we also serve Northern New Jersey. We also have offices in Birmingham, Alabama, New Orleans, Louisiana, Houston, Texas, and hopefully very soon we will be in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, we, we are CDFI, we serve underserved communities um, and provide financing to those business owners and communities um, and nonprofits that are seeking uh, capital for either their business or uh, their nonprofit, as I, as I mentioned. We've been very active uh, in the PPP space um, over the past uh, six plus months. Um, and we've uh, been very active in specifically in Newark. Um, and we've been able to provide business owners in Newark uh, with the capital uh, to uh, meet their payroll needs through PPP. Uh, what we've been seeing this time around that there have been some challenges and I want to uh, just discuss this very briefly because uh, my other peers on the panel have spoken about PPP, but we've been seeing some challenges uh, for this round, specifically for those second time borrowers. Um, the SBA seems to be looking at things through a with a fine tooth comb, uh, making sure that all your, you know, that you are, that you meet those uh, quarter, year over year reductions uh, in your payroll. So uh, when you um, are applying for your second round of PPP this year, just make sure that your package is complete. Uh, if you did receive uh, any type of PPP funding from True Fund, uh, reach out to me or one of my colleagues to help you with the application process so that we can uh, help you uh, receive the funds and also uh, have your PPP funds forgiven. That would also lead me to the topic of PPP forgiveness. I will encourage the uh, recipients of PPP to start your forgiveness process so that you can wipe that uh, the, the funds off your books uh, because it will appear as a loan. And you don't want to, uh, you know, if you're seeking some type of financing this year, you don't want to have on your books an existing loan that might uh, mess up your opportunity to get some real uh, working capital going forward. So once again, please begin uh, your process for PPP forgiveness if you received funds uh, previously for PPP. Uh, True Fund, we also uh, have a program for contract financing. Uh, specifically with the agencies in New York City and in Louisiana. In New York City, we work with the MTA, School Construction Authority, all of the city and state agencies uh, to provide you with the mobilization financing to uh, get your projects underway. Uh, we've been very successful with this uh, and, and we've been able to help minority and women business owners uh, you know, uh, complete their projects by providing them with the access to capital uh, for mobilization. Um, and lastly, I want to speak about our another product that we have, which is called New Market Tax Credits, which enables True Fund to provide uh, capital in underserved communities throughout the United States. Uh, with loans amounts starting at $250,000 up to 1.5, or we could go up to $2 million. Uh, this includes nonprofits, churches, business owners. The goal is to help uh, business owners and, and organizations 
create job growth when job growth within their communities. Uh, this is a product that uh, we have to disperse the money. We have to get rid of this, this money for new market tax credits. And a big portion of Newark qualifies for new market tax credits. And so those are the three products that I wanted to speak to you about today, which is PPP, contract financing, and new market tax credits. And you know, once again, I want to thank Invest Newark for having us. It's been great working with you guys and, and helping out uh, the business owners in, in Newark. Vanessa, you've been doing an outstanding job and I appreciate communicating with you. Um, Liddell and the whole team, um, I look forward to working with you. Uh, and, I, and I don't wanna miss Roy going forward. <laughs> so <laughs> let, me, let me make sure I give everyone credit here, but I, it, you know, it's great working with everyone in, uh, with Invest Newark. And uh, that concludes my presentation. Thank you so much, Steve. And uh, it's been a pleasure working with you as well and ensuring that we uh, let the businesses of Newark realize again that there are there is funding, um, maybe not that they're traditionally used to outside of Newark and that um, true funds available for them. And we look forward to hear more about the new market tax credit fund. That, that's something that's uh, new to my ears. So thank you so much. Welcome. So with that, um, we have um, had all the lenders that are presenting this afternoon, but now I'd like to introduce our Chambers of Commerce. So this afternoon we have um, Philip Wolfolk from the African American Chamber of Commerce. Philip? Hey, thank you, Vanessa. Um, I'm with the the African American Chamber of Commerce of New Jersey. I serve as the I serve on the board of the chamber, and also I'm the the uh, senior loan administrator. I've worked as a resource partner with the New Jersey Economic Development Authority through the chamber over the last round of PPP and the start of the economic injury disaster loans. And so we, we've, we've been uh, at this for a little while now. Um, we're still working with the PPP, the PPP loan product. Um, we're doing it and we're also doing that along with technical assistance. So we find that in this environment, there are certainly some folks who need a little hand getting through the process. So we will work with them directly on that. Uh, we have a number of partnerships and relationships with lenders who are typically using the online portals and, pa and platforms uh, to deliver the PPP, uh, but we work hand in hand with the, the folks that need some assistance with getting through that process. In addition to the PPP, we're also in the process of of finalizing a relationship with New Jersey Community Capital to be able to provide additional access to capital to small businesses across the state. And that uh, product will be rolling out as the Equitable Small Business Initiative. Uh, so you'll hear more about that. In the meantime, I can be reached at pwolfolk at um, aaccnj.com or 609-610-6310. I look forward to working with with uh, the panelists who are on here today. I've met some of the some of the folks already, and I look forward to to any questions that participants may have. Thank you. Thanks, Vanessa. Thank you, Phil, for joining us this afternoon. I'm sure everyone um, is definitely uh, thankful to hear that there's additional assistance for to provide them with access to funding. So thank you very much, Philip. Thank you. Now, uh, for our next uh, chamber this afternoon that's joining us from the state is the State Hispanic Chamber of Commerce of New Jersey. So I bring back uh, Luis ba back to uh, our stage here. It's me again. Thank you, Vanessa. Happy to be here. Yo no sé si quieren que hable en español, pero we are the voice of over, over 120,000 Latino small business owners in the state of New Jersey. And we partnered with many of the people that are here on the call. Uh, one thing that we have been doing at the, at the Statewide Hispanic Chamber of Commerce is that we will provide live support to those entrepreneurs in English and Spanish when they are trying to apply to any of the programs. 
We have been doing that with the NJEDA and probably Maribel is tired to look at the screen of the phone and look, that is my name. But we try to reach out as, as many people as we can. As I say, what we do is every time that they have a program, we will schedule a Zoom meeting or a webinar. We will assist live all those individuals in English and Spanish that they need to apply to any of the programs of the, the NJEDA, the SBDA, the, any program that is available. And also, um, we will provide the information about those programs, the, the, the rent assistance program that is available, the, the grants that are available, in many cases from government agencies and in other cases from uh, private entities. But our goal is to assist many uh, minority and small business owners, and we have the ability to do that in Spanish. 60% um, of the Latino small business owners will prefer to learn in Spanish. Um, that's why it's important that we do that, the outreach in Spanish. And immigrants, we are 30% of the state population here in the state of New Jersey, but we own almost 50% of the main street businesses. And we do believe that the best way that we have to overcome poverty is through entrepreneurship. We are here to help, we are here to assist, we are just one call away. And we really love to partner with other non-for-profit and other government agencies and other uh, um, chambers of commerce. I wanna tell Philip that is the best version of your Harmor that I ever see. And I wanna thank you, uh, uh, Francisco Cortez for his service as a veteran. And I wanna say thank you for Qua to join us today. Thank you and have a good day. Thank you, Luis. And you know, I think you stated a, a number of vital statistics for people to realize um, or really grasp. And you know, we're really fortunate that the State Hispanic Chamber um, not only uh, serves the um, your members, but also um, Hispanic sp small business owners throughout the state. So thank you very much. And then without further ado, I'd like to introduce two new friends that you've introduced me to. Uh, first, let's um, introduce Francisco Cortez from the U.S. Veterans Chamber of Commerce. Hello, Francisco. Thank you, thank you. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yes. Perfect. So thank you, uh, Invest Newark, for the opportunity to come speak with everyone. I am the president and co-founder of the New Jersey State Veterans Chamber of Commerce a chamber that we launched in 2018 on November uh, on Veterans Day. I'm also a small business owner. I'm the CEO of the Setra Group, a leading multicultural uh, communications agency headquartered here in New Jersey. In the state, uh, we have approximately 400,000 veterans, many of whom are small business owners. Uh, and we advocate for those uh, veteran business owners, uh, not only them, but we also advocate for student veterans and spouses of veterans as well. Uh, veterans are unique uh, and have many challenges with access to capital. And I'll give uh, some examples of how in hopes that the lenders that are on the call can kind of understand uh, when next time they sit with a veteran uh, business owner, why they struggle with uh, access to capital more so than any other particular group. When a veteran is in the military for however long, 10, 20 years, we are stationed from duty station to duty station every three years. And it does not allow the veteran to gain a substantial credit report or for them to own a home because everything is provided by the government. So when the veteran is ETS or a civilian and starts their business, they don't have that background of credit or that home that they have established for the last 15 to 20 years that they could put up for collateral uh, to gain a loan. Uh, also separately, veterans who serve are often business owners but are deployed while service, servicing in their, uh, their business to anywhere uh, in the US. So they could be gone for a week, uh, three weeks or three months. Uh, so it's very challenging for veteran businesses to kind of uh, be presented with uh, some challenges that other business owners don't. But I work very closely with uh, some chambers of commerce, Lewis in particular, 
we actually started a Valley bank account for our business um, about three weeks ago and they've been phenomenal. And they're assisting us with our PPP loan as well. Uh, but at the chamber, the New Jersey State Veterans Chamber of Commerce, what we do to help veterans uh, apply for access to capital is kind of educate our veteran uh, population within the chamber. We create Zoom webinars, everyone's on Zoom, uh, that specifically walk them through the ABCs of presenting themselves favorably in front of a bank, uh, access to capital, uh, how to build a business model. We get uh, CPAs that can help them and walk them through what it is that they need. We also provide Zoom calls. Uh, we have lawyers that are mar Marine veterans who also work with the Hispanic Chamber uh, who, who walk you through what it is that you need um, to present yourself again in a favorable way. Uh, and then, you know, I, I, I hope to work closer with Newark. I'm pretty sure Newark has a very large veteran population and as well as my other comrades and other chambers of commerce. But uh, that was a little bit about the chamber and thank you uh, from on behalf of the veteran population in the state of New Jersey for allowing us to, uh, to speak to you today. Thank you, Francisco. Uh, you know, I think it's really invaluable that we ensure that we're addressing all, um, you know, diversity uh, throughout Newark. And definitely, we I, I've spoken to a, quite a few uh, business owners that are veterans, and I think people need to realize that they have other resources um, available to them. And, you know, I think it's important that maybe they didn't realize that we've got a chapter here in New Jersey that they can reach out to. So thank you so much and thank you for your service. My pleasure, thank you as well. And now um, the next uh, chamber we have coming up is the uh, US Pan-Asian American Chamber. And we have Kwa Le, the president of the Northeast uh, Division of the chamber. Hi, Kwa. Hi, hi, everyone. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm the US, uh, I'm the president for the US Pan Asian American Chamber Club for the Northeast chapter. Uh, our chapter extends all through the United States. Uh, we have five different chapters. Um, what we do for the PPP stuff is that we have a partner, a direct partner with a lender. And I'm, I'm also a uh, uh, entrepreneur of three different businesses. So uh, I'm also going to be telling, be a testimonial. So, um, you know, I very, I already received my my PPP 2.0, and the partner that we have is exactly uh, what who we partner with. Uh, the process, I know there's some issues around uh, the processes, but I could tell you at least the partner that we have, there are I haven't experienced any issues that you know we they have it's a robust uh, backend system. It's transparent with the uh, you know with the process and and there's a just a live contact so it's not just a direct emails only but if you you know everything needs to move very swiftly uh, our partner was able to uh, get things through the pipeline um, as a chamber we're here to not have you survive off of a loan you're here to survive off of a business uh, you know growth and be able to connect with others. Um, so our, our goals are to create, create uh, opportunities for new possibilities, meaning that if you need to, you know, from government contracts, we, you know, we do, we work with the FDIC, the Federal Reserve, uh, members extend out to Facebook, Uber, uh, you know, the list goes on um, from, from a national side of things. So, um, you know, so we're here to just like, you know, we, we partner with uh, Luis De La Hoyes with the Statewide Hispanic Chamber. We have a show called Biz Talk. You can find it on the USPAC, uh, USPAACC-NE.com. And we are putting out some uh, hopefully long shelf type of content that will help you uh, uh, grow your business as well. So, uh, you know, again, again, we're as a chamber, we're a conduit. Uh, we like to connect people to help you grow. And obviously, uh, you know, there's a lot of opportunities to connect to capital. We, we, are, we are one of the resources out here. Um, and if you need us, just uh, reach out to us and we'll be happy to connect you. So with that, thank you, Vanessa. And thank you, Luis. <laughs> thank you, Kwa. Now, um, I'd like to invite uh, all our speakers to uh, turn on their video. Um, and uh, I, there are 
very few questions that came in through the Q&A. Um, going to look at more into the chat room to see if there are any uh, other specific questions that came up. But I also want to give everyone the opportunity um, if like they kind of want to address again, um, at least provide your email or um, share a link. You know, this is your opportunity to give your uh, last pitch before we close. No, nope, I can just say uh, you can get me email is the best Alfred dot to tone at SBA.gov, A-L-F-R-E-D dot T-I-T-O-N-E at SBA.gov. Well, you're probably better doing the general mailbox because I get thousands of emails a day, just well, a little bit. <laughs> but um, oh, one more I get a lot. I'm sorry. One more, Vanessa. Um, I would say it's uh, uh, as a chamber, you know, uh, you could join. You could become a member in our in our chamber for free, uh, for free for the next uh, sixty days if you sign up. So uh, you know, if you sign up, just make sure you reach out to us. I can give you the promo code, and then uh, there are no fees to join our mem uh, our our chamber during this time. Okay. Thank you, Kwa. I think uh, everyone. That's always a question people have, especially you know as far as expenses and you know the value of. Um, joining uh, any memberships or any uh, chambers and what's the value they get out of that. And we, I'm sure people appreciate that, especially during this time. Um, the other thing I wanna mention is, you know, Kelly was on before SBDC. We also have our SCORE and Women's Business Center folks. And SBA is still doing regular lending too. So if anybody, is not qualified for the PPP or the idle, or, you know, some businesses have actually done very well because they've managed to turn and shift their business. So if you're looking for other lending or advice, uh, we are still active in the regular lending field also. And good luck to everybody out there. Just quickly, I noticed someone on the uh, chat said, I'm a service disabled veteran business owner. Uh, I'm not sure who that person was, but, um, just Google New Jersey State Veterans Chamber of Commerce and let us know how we can be of service to you. Great, thank you. And Al, on your point about their, um, you know, types of lending, um, especially for businesses that just started out in the last year and you don't have the financials that or meet the criteria, you know, there are other sources and all the people on this call right now have available funding sources. So definitely, um, don't look at this as just now as emergency funding, but also um, any other funding that you need to, to bridge capital or um, even businesses are starting now. Business, businesses start every day. Um, they now have a different angle, a different perspective, but they are starting and we're all here to support you. Uh, I think there was just one question that I did see in the chat room, and this probably relates to um, a lot of nonprofits, you know, whether they're a church or um, another type of uh, community group. Are, does anyone know what type of funding they can go for? Because obviously, er everything we've discussed here today are primarily for, for for-profit businesses. Actually, for PPP, a lot of, I don't have the list in front of me, but most nonprofits are eligible. So they, if they go to the coronavirus website, the most nonprofits are now eligible for the PPP loan. That is great to learn. That is great to yep. learn. Vanessa, with NJEDA, all 501Cs will be able to apply for the emergency loan as well. Phase two. That's right. That's great news. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. And Vanessa, I'm sorry, as far as Industrial Bank goes, it doesn't matter if it's for profit or for nonprofit, as long as they're bringing some type of uh, service to the community, we'll be more than willing to look at uh, entertaining them to provide the services that our community really needs. Another great one, thank you. I, again, you know, everyone is, uh, whether it was COVID or not, everyone's looking for sources and funding to support their business and grow their business. And thank you um, all our lenders, SBA, and also our Chambers of Commerce. And now I uh, give it to Brunel Hall, the, our Invest Network President and CEO. 
Wow, uh, that was amazing. Uh, I just want to take the time, to thank all of our wonderful panelists for, I mean, just super timely information for our small businesses uh, to take advantage of so that they cannot just uh, survive the impact of COVID-19, but thrive out of it. And I just, uh, I couldn't be more happy about the information that was shared today. I'm glad we recorded it because it was a ton of information. Uh, and as Vanessa mentioned, the uh, recording will be available on Investor's website via our, uh, our webinar gallery. But uh, I will close by thanking Vanessa Quijano again, our SVP of Business Development and her team for organizing a wonderful, wonderful Access to Capital webinar. And uh, I wanna thank all the guests and thank you, Newark, for tuning in uh, and please look forward to our future training opportunities. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day, folks. Thank you. Have Take care, everybody. All right. Thanks, all. Be safe.